You're watching Drake Queen Gaming. Enjoy the video. Man, look at that new intro. Oh, I love it. So good, guys. This is the new update for Echo, version 1.01. .01. And it has a whole lot of new stuff in it. It's even got some side stories that explain that explains more of the lore in the game, and I'm excited to show you all, uh, show you all this content. Eventually, I can't show you everything today. It's a lot of stuff. But anyway, guys, let's pick this back up. We're continuing on Jenna's path. Hope you all enjoyed this video. Please sit back for the next 20 minutes. Allow me to entertain you. And let's jump right into it. All right. Alarm chain, you're up. Let's do it. All right. <clears throat> Ordinarily, the lights of the town would guide us to where we... Would guide us where to go. But everything's dark. The moon are our only real source of light. And even that is partially obscured. The productive thing to do is just think ahead right now. We'll come into town along the back roads. Get to the motel and take your car. I give her an affirmative thumbs up. Misha, meanwhile, is clutching his knife tight. It reminds me of how, he, of how he was with the wrench earlier, when he was worried about Leo attacking him. Now the two walk nearly side by side. Everyone but Leo is rattled, that's for sure. I can't tell if it's the supposed hysteria's fault, or just a completely rational reaction to all the shit that's happened today. Misha's usually arrogant and gruff demeanor is replaced by a more timid posture, the bat rubbing his neck like he can't believe he's alive. I try to think of something to say as he turns to face me. Misha, uh... I'm sorry about Keith. So, okay, so someone in the comments wanted me to actually see if I can do a cowboy accent for Misha. I mean, does anyone know if that's what Misha sounds like? If it is, cool, alright? So I'm gonna try and do a cowboy accent for Misha. If you guys prefer the other, the more lighter southern voice I did last time, let me know. Alright, let me see if I can do a cowboy voice. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that's my cowboy voice. <laughs> Alright, he responds simply, sucking in his lower lip for a moment between one of his fangs before speaking again. Still not sure exactly what happened, but now I have a more definitive idea. He looks ahead again, shifting, his, shifting the topic. I had a dream about you, you know. Oh? After we spoke, I only got a little bit of sleep, but what I did dream stuck out to me. You were holding me underwater, drowning me. A cold chill creeps along my spine. Jenna looks over, raising her brow curiously at the bat. Leo stares straight ahead, unfazed. That's... weird? Why are you telling me this? Misha waves his hand, dismissing my question as he continues. You were holding me underwater, and it was fucking terrifying because I couldn't breathe. Your hands around my throat felt exactly like that noose did, the way they bristled and cut into my neck. He points to the matted fur around his throat, the pinkish raw rubbed flesh visible even in the dark. But talking emotionally and shit, I started feeling thankful. Thankful I was killing you? That's rather macabre. The bat nods, seemingly well aware of how strange this sounds. Yet, he doesn't relent, noting how exceptionally strange everything else has been lately. I'd be willing to take anything at face value at this point. Mm-hmm. Like you were freeing me. Real fucked up suicidal shit. When I was up in that noose, though, I didn't want to die, so that part didn't translate. Honestly surprised I didn't piss and shit myself. Did you guys? Jenna stares blankly at him. No. I did not. No. Leo, of course, is silent. I think I almost left town a couple days ago. We've never gotten caught up in this mess. Well, why did you really disappear the first time, back in 2008? Misha fiddles with something in his pocket, taking it out and peering it over. I can't quite make out what it is. Something plastic and thick. A lot of reasons. My folks turned on me after finding out about some shit one night. Came home to find my room torn up, all my belongings outside. My mom, the cunt, wouldn't stop fucking bawling, screeched like a dying chicken at me. My dad, meanwhile, had this old police baton, kept coming at me with it whenever I tried to come inside. Kept screaming and to let me in and apologize for every little screw-up that I could think of. None of it worked. I tried to sleep on the porch, but Dad came out and started kicking me in the back till I left. Jenna grimaces. That's awful. Leo looks back over his shoulder, slowing his pace some to match ours. I can tell he's at least I can tell he's at least half listening now. No longer out, no longer spaced out. Keith was gone, and uh, I didn't have anywhere else to go. It wasn't too popular, as I recall, even with Heather, Heather with even with Heather, Clinton, Jeremy. They had their own problems. Should have told me. 
The words catch Mika by surprise, the wolf staring at him from across the shrubbery. Hey, I know we just survived a near-death experience together, but I don't need to be getting all retroactively sappy. We turned a small bend around a sandy embankment, some old car parts scattered in the underbrush. Actually, I quite like this new voice I'm doing for Keith. The moon is finally visible from behind Echo Canyon, and I can make out what Misha's carrying. Brian's cell phone. I guess he's going to try to take that in as evidence. As he moves to push it back into his pocket, it slips and clatters against the rock beneath him. Ah, oh, fuck. I'll get it. Leo bends down, taking hold of the phone. The screen is shattered and a few slivers of glass fall to the ground. Damn it. The bat extends out his hand. Thanks. Leo doesn't budge, still staring at the shattered device. Then, from beyond the desert scrub and scattered car parts, a mechanical roar. Light flashes before us, and Leo holds up his paw to shield himself from the light. It takes me just a moment to realize their headlights, and the roar is the start of an old engine. It's a van, sitting right in front of us, and it's all too familiar. Oh, fuck me. Oh! That is an awesome CG render. Damn, that looks cool. CG render. Not CG. I don't think that's... No, that's not CG. That's artwork. I'm dumb. I'm dumb. I'm a dummy. What the... Jenna reels back, eyes wide. That wasn't there a moment ago, she mutters, craning her neck some to peer through the red-tinted window to see who's behind the wheel. After a moment of inspection, it's clear that there's no one inside. Jenna. What? Jenna, this is the van from the dream, the one I told you about. Oh, come on. Jenna doesn't sound incredulous to my claim, just exhausted. She crosses her arms tightly over her chest, not letting her eyes leave sight of the idling vehicle. Okay, then. What's it doing here? I don't have an answer for her, and therefore remain silent, stepping away from the front of the vehicle in case it somehow takes off. Misha, meanwhile, looks confused. He peers around, his yellow eyes bright and shimmering in the focus of the headlights. What the fuck? I know where we are. But we were heading into town, toward the motel. How the fuck are we here? We didn't cross the highway, did we? I look to our east, and sure enough, there it is. The weathered asphalt of Route 65. I would have noticed if we crossed pavement. Someone would have. It's the complete opposite direction that we should be heading. Jenna gasps, seemingly realizing this is a little after the rest of us. We've been here before. Leo speaks up, clutching the side of his head with a wince. You recognize it too, right? Leo still sounds half asleep, turning to face us. Though, it appears he's only speaking to Misha and I. The bat blinks. Oh. Oh, fuck. Um... You dreamed about this too, Chase? I swallow and nod, clutching my clammy paws against my shirt. I, I think so. The dream from earlier today had already begun to fade from my memory, as most dreams do. But the way I felt watching it is still very clear, and this whole scene is starting to give me some serious deja vu, or something like it. There was an albino guy. He had bright red eyes and got ran over? The van's motor continues to idle, humming as it waits. Um, mine was a little different. Misha doesn't elaborate. No, we've been here before in real life. Implying that this is not a written that this is not real life? Misha glances over at the wolf, and the two exchange a look for a moment. Jenna steps forward and tugs at the driver's side door. It opens with a quiet creak, some errant cobwebs fraying apart as the door is fully pulled fully open. That means it's full of fucking spiders, and that means no I'm not getting in. I'm pretty sure Chase would I'm pretty sure Chase would also be saying that. She squints at something by the wheel, then reaches in and taps it. Keys are in the ignition, and there's this big red glare on the dash. Maybe a check engine light? She frowns to herself. It looks like this thing hasn't been used in a while, saying it's whoever turned this on, but I'm no mechanic. If only there were one among us now. Leo? She pokes her head out, raising an inquisitive brow at the wolf. You're welcome to take a look if you're feeling up to it. She eyes Leo up, examining his physical condition. Her expression is a mixture of skepticism and concern. Leo begins to limp toward the van, and Misha quickly steps up beside him to keep him from tipping over. He grunts appreciatively in response, speaking up. It's probably not a check engine light. What makes you say that? Those didn't really exist back when this was made, before the mid-90s. Are you guys thinking we can drive this out of Echo? I'm a little more concerned with wondering who turned this on in the first place, and how we even got here. But that's an optimistic thought, Chase. 
So maybe this is a gift horse that we're looking squarely in the mouth right now? Doubt it. Misha rasps, helping Leo prop himself against the driver's side door as Jenna steps aside. The light looks like it isn't coming from the dash. Leo clumsily grasps the steering wheel, peering closer. It's like, a, it's like it's being reflected off the odometer, but I don't see a direct source. How Leo can see clearly out at all after repeated blows to the head may be the real question here. That's fucking weird. A shuffling noise comes from the back of the van, and everyone freezes. There's a raggedy fabric partition hiding everything past the front seats from view. Gingerly, Leo pulls it aside and squints into a red light illuminating his face. Is anyone back there? Leo doesn't immediately respond, and I can't see him well from where I'm standing. I limp my way up, si up beside Jenna. L Leo? She inquires again, more urgent. No, not right now. There's something back there, though. Well, that's obvious enough. I'm too big to squeeze between the seats. I'm gonna go around. Everyone takes a step back out of the now seemingly coherent wolf's way as he exits the van. Oh, God, it's creepy looking. Fucking deja vu, something fierce right now. You too? Jenna gives us both a quizzical look as Leo braces the handle of the rusted van door and gives it a yank. At first, it doesn't budge, but after another hard tug, the door flies open. Once one door partially unhinged as it dangles to the side. There's something standing in the middle of the van on three spindly legs. The red light projects from something on the top, and it begins to flash on and off. A camera on a tripod? At first, I think it's mine, but upon closer inspection, it looks like an older model. No fucking way! Misha, Misha quickly backs away, nearly tip, tripping over a prickly pear cactus on his hassle, on his haste. Uh... Uh, nope, this isn't real. Everyone pack it up. We're being filmed? What is this, some elaborate prank show? This is 100% not funny. Leo says nothing, climbing into the, into the back of the van and turning the display monitor on the camera around. On it, a little red dot on the corner flashes on and off, in time with illumination of the rest of the cab. The display screen itself shows us standing there at the back of the van, though the image is fuzzy, distorted. I wonder how long this has been here. That's my camera! Misha shouts in surprise, looking briefly to the rest of us before lowering his voice some. Or, well, the high school's camera, but they were shit at keeping inventory. I ditched it after my folks kicked me out. Okay, but what's it doing here? And why is it recording? Judging by the looks on everyone's faces, I don't think anyone has an answer to that. Leo brings a heavy paw up to his eyes, rubbing them some before peering at Misha, then the screen, then back again. Misha cants his head some at the wolf, letting out a slow exhale. Either this is one fucked up joke, wolf boy, or I'm beginning to think this is the hum's doing. The hum. He mentioned that before, by the motel. Well, I haven't heard that word in a while. What's the hum? It's a uh, hard to describe. Bad dreams, like we talked about before. Feels kind of like Vision Quest shit. Real spiritual stuff that Keith talked about a lot. Wasn't good vibes, though. Bad energy only. Thing is, it only really happens when you're sleeping, and I'm wide-ass awake. He extends his arms out to his sides for a moment before gripping the van's door, thumbing at the chipping paint. I haven't thought about that in a while. Jeremy and Adam talked about it when I was younger, after I mentioned seeing... The thing we just saw half an hour ago, she wants to say, but she still visibly can't quite accept that. Not yet. You know what? I don't, but as I was saying, you can kind of you can kind of tell when it's happening because it's more than just a nightmare. Your ears start buzzing. L like uh, one of them orchestra bands turning up violins in your skull, you know? A creeping sensation that I know exactly what he's talking about builds in my gut. You hear it too? What? Like right now? Leo stares for a moment before nodding. One of the bat's large ears flicks and he turns his head from side to side. I, I don't think so. He pauses. Maybe. Might be the engine. He shifts attention back to the vehicle, yanking on the van's door some. Spooky-ass ghost van engine. The metal frame of the van seems to rattle in response, so that might be just my imagination. Sometimes I'd go out in the hills and just camp out away from home, because the hum wasn't as bad there. Heather did it a bunch with me, too, though uh, she had her other reasons. Jenna nods, exhaling slowly before crossing her arms over her chest. So, so I suppose then you have a theory about all this? One based in, what, Masetta spiritualism? Honestly, I thought it was like radon poison or something. 
but you get the hum in a few other places around town, too. I've slept all over. The rail yard, the lake, this van, they're all real hummy places. You slept at this van before? Despite everything that's happened, the idea that anyone would want to take a nap in this creepy thing is dubious at best for Jenna. Well, Misha trails off. For one usually so coarse and bras, and he's, he's see, his seeming awkwardness right now feels out of place for him. We both have. Briefly. He places the flat of his palm on the bed of the cab. Flattened cardboard boxes and ratty bits of fabric that, that must have been blankets or towels cover the surface. The large canine's brow furrows some, and finally he looks back up to uh, looks back up at all of us. It may just be me, but he doesn't seem as sluggish anymore. Jenna lets out an exhausted but amused uh, but amused noise, letting her arm flop down to her sides. Truly, I'm not sure I see the appeal. Leon and Misha look at each other. We just get, there's a silence. Wait. Hold on, you're not saying... I was so stupid. We were both stupid. Misha squeezes the bridge of his nose, closing his eyes as if, as if cringing at himself. I was such a skeevy little bitch back then, I don't know why I pushed... No, I don't mean it for that, Misha. I mean for what happened after. You had it rough and I didn't care, or if I did, I didn't want to, because of what happened at the party. I feel like an outsider looking in at some intimate conversation I don't understand, which is a feeling I can't say I've felt when I'm around Leo. He'd always go out of his way to include me in everything. What party? What are you guys talking about? Chase, they... 2008, that deal at Delos Muertes party at the Parsons Warehouse. The one where you told me you were gay, the night we got together. I blink. My parents had caught me watching gay porn that morning on the computer, and I was afraid to come home to them. So I went to some party at Parsons. The night itself is kind of a blur. I remember getting in a very brief fight with a guy who dumped beer on TJ, then waking up with Leo over me, eyes full of concern. Somehow I ended up confiding everything to him about being me being into guys. He apparently had a hunch about it, and the next thing I knew he was ushering me out of the old warehouse and walk, to walk home with him. We kissed in the rail yard by his house, and that was about the start of our relationship proper. Still, something always seemed a bit off about that party and the way Leo was acting. I think I remember. Some dude trying to come up to talk to him, and Leo telling him before, telling him off before insisting that I not ask about it. He seemed really serious at the time. Didn't want to ruin a good thing or something like that. I didn't get a good look at the guy he talked to, but he was carrying... a camera? The wolf taps the side of the tripod with his fingertips. Leo, you are reprehensible! Jenna's voice is cold and curt. Jenna? What? Shut up. Jenna looks taken aback, but only for a split second before shaking her head in disbelief. Leo winces, clutching his wounded head, his reddish eyes flicking up to meet mine. I shouldn't have agreed to it. I was just... Jenna quickly interjects, stepping in front of me. No, Leo, this whole week has just proven to me time and time again that you're just... She stares, letting out a hot puff of air between her lips before spreading her arms wide. Just perfect for Echo! You truly, truly belong here, you know that? God, how old were you then? How old was Misha? Did you even care? Fucking hell, you about done. The bat pivots on his heel away from the van to face Jenna, his eyebrows narrowed beneath his bangs. Look, you don't know me. I ain't some fucking victim. Shit was my choice. What? What was your choice? Chase, you're an absolute idiot sometimes. Jenna sounds very disgusted. I frown at her, wondering what the fuck I did wrong. And I abandoned you. Jenna visibly seethes. None of this, she points at the rusty van, that same red light flashing on and off, makes any sense. But all your actions completely do. You're just all so perfect for this town, thinking any of that was okay. She throws up her hands, legs shaking with frustration. Is she including me in this? It isn't. I'm done. I'm gone. Done. Jenna! She turns to leave, though a crackling from the front of the van brings her to a halt. Hey. From the console, the distorted voice I've become all too familiar with rings forth again. It's coming from the old radio, the audio crackling through dusty speakers. Jenna recognizes it instantly and begins stepping back away from the van again. We should go. Now. Her voice is shaky. The air itself seems fuzzy. Electric. Like I'm breathing in hundreds of tiny strands of vibrating twine. That sounds like Chase. Hi. Leo was the only one to outright respond back, 
And Misha looks at him with a bewildered expression. Don't talk to the don't talk to the hum. It's Chase. Chase is right there, dipshit. He gestures to me, still sitting gobstopped at the back of the van. Bill slowly looks back at me, squinting at my chin, then my eyes. It's me. Let's go home. He sees that it isn't my mouth moving, and his eyes widen a little more. A small line of blood runs down from a spot just behind his ear down to his jaw. I promise I won't bring it up again. Let's go home. Who gives a fuck what the others say? You know I'm right. I remember saying those exact words. After Flynn blasted us for skipping Jenna's birthday party in 10th grade. I convinced Leo to hang out with me instead. I was addicted to the private time with him. I promise I won't bring it up again. We're all silent, staring at the dark cab where the noise is coming from. Except for Leo. He's looking directly at me. Leo. Why? He asks me. I... I'm not sure what to say. It's not me speaking, but those are my words. Everything feels hazy. Hazy and wet. Misha leans his head into the van, trying to get the wolf's attention. Leo! Keith always said not to talk to the hum. That's what this shit is, no doubt. Hysteria, it has a voice? Apparently, it's your fucking voice, Chase. No wonder everyone's so damn riled up about you coming back. But why me? Do I look like some kind of Maceta Wiseman? Misha grunts, fidgeting from foot to foot. Despite his demeanor, he's definitely visibly unnerved by all this. Alright guys, I'm gonna go ahead and stop it here. Oh, fucking creepy as hell. All right, guys, so apparent. So, I don't know why the hum has Chase's voice. That's very strange. Why did it pick him? Maybe it is drawn to Leo for some reason. Maybe it likes trauma. I don't know. It's a strange cosmic force that's kind of unknowable. But, anyway, guys, thank you so much for watching this creepy-ass episode of Echo. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and ring that notification bell to the next video. I love you all. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye!